Thank you for the uh, warm welcome, everybody. It's a real honor to be here. Um, and uh, if you walk out of my talk, I'll just assume that you've gone across the street and entered Biobus 2, which, as Letha mentioned, is sitting uh, right in front of the Opera House. Um, why is Biobus 2 here? Why am I here? Um, I think Cliff and uh, Stephanie Kuntz uh, both gave great rationales for the work that we're doing. Um, here's a, a little bit of data um, that shows you uh, what inspired me uh, to start this project uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, we have a big problem in science education. Um, and uh, what you'll notice here is that there are very bad numbers coming in in terms of how students are doing in science. It breaks down very strongly across both racial and uh, income uh, backgrounds. And uh, the other thing to notice here is that um, the numbers are bad across the board, right? I mean, the highest number on this graph is not great, not really where you want it to be. Um, so um, the need is very clear. Um, so how does the Biobus address that need? And so every day the Biobus travels to an area school, bringing its microscopes and scientists to students who would never get this in an ordinary classroom. It's almost like having a trip in our own backyard. Thanks to donors, it costs the schools little. It's his mouse. For Biobus scientists, it's a win-win. Do you want to see it bigger? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so this project, as Letha mentioned, um, started uh, really on this stage uh, seven years ago. Um, the pop tech community um, gave, uh, gave me a huge boost. And um, the whole point of the BioBus is to give students the kinds of hands-on, inquiry-based experiences, science experiences, that all the research shows is what they need in order to get interested in science, in order to stay interested in science, in order to excel both in school and outside of school, um, so that we have the next generation of scientists um, that we need and that the communities that Biobus works with needs. Um, so when I stood here on this stage seven years ago, I asked you, and this time it's for real. Do you want to see it bigger? <laughs> and there was a large yes at the end there, in case you missed it. Um, and so I'm really happy to report that uh, we've gotten bigger. Since this talk seven years ago in 2010, we've had 200,000 students on board the BioBus. Wow. At that time, it was pretty much just me working on the BioBus. Um, uh, I didn't teach all 200,000 of those students, however, single-handedly, we have a team of almost 20 people, uh, primarily scientists, that are working to make this happen. And um, the culmination, the real fruit of a lot of that labor has been the second biobus, and that's what's here today. So we now have a, I guess you can call it a fleet of two biobuses. Um, <laughs> And this is the first school visit that Biobus 2 made. This was actually last week at a school in Manhattan in Washington Heights. And um, the students um, came on the bus. They used the research-grade microscopes. They worked with research scientists. And um, when they're on the bus, they have this incredible moment of discovery, of excitement around science. Um, now, we didn't just make it bigger in terms of building more buses and having hundreds of thousands of students aboard those buses. Um, we also made it bigger in terms of the depth of the experience. Most of the time when students are coming aboard the BioBus, it's about a 45-minute um, uh, interaction, and they get that spark of interest and inspiration. But what we've also done is partnered with community centers all across New York City um, this is the newest of those centers at Columbia University, a partnership that we have there. Um, this is an educational science lab, and that's where we're able to really build on that initial spark of interest and have students work in small groups. We quickly rearrange all those nice, neat, tidy lines of chairs and tables and uh, make it into a real working science lab where students spend 15, 20, 25 hours working on in-depth projects. Um, the more advanced students um, then get 
uh, even further opportunities. Um, we have high school and college students. This is Alexis and Citarella and Emmanuel. They're working on a research project in partnership with, uh, mentored by one of our scientists, one of our biobus scientists. They're looking at the immune response in a uh, tiny crustacean that they find in the East River just off of the edge of the island of Manhattan. Um, these students are aspiring scientists. They're in high school, they're in college, and again, all the research says that in order to make sure that those students stay in science, that they keep on that pathway, they need ongoing support. They need paid internships in science. They need science mentors to help them choose their path and make sure that they don't drop out or get discouraged, right, and have the kind of support they need to, to succeed. And they're doing amazing research projects at the same time. These are two students um, who are working on making a DIY homemade microscope um, uh, with, with one of our scientists that, that uh, they can create with a 3D printer. Um, these are students, uh, interns, that are working on a, uh, a choice chamber. They actually created a chamber where you can stick organisms inside and they can choose whether they want to go to blue light or green light or if they want to go toward a dry environment or a hot environment. Um, they can um, uh, really assess the behavior of these organisms. Um, and a lot of these experiments are actually ending up back on the bio bus uh, for the hundreds of thousands of students that are, that are, that are boarding, boarding the buses. Um, this is an example of an image that you can make today or tomorrow uh, on BioBus 2 outside. This is a, 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 a sample called a bryozoan. It's a beautiful colonial sea creature that um, is part of the excitement that, that students get and that, and that everybody gets when they zoom in onto that microscopic world and see how exciting and cool science can be. Now, the culmination of that work is to really create that next generation of, of scientists. This is um, Loratu. She's one of our paid interns. And uh, she's presenting her results to a graduate student at Columbia at one of our science happy hours. And this is one of the ways that we get students to move beyond our programs and start to uh, get internships in labs at Columbia, at NYU, at um, uh, research institutions across New York City so that they can really take that next step and, uh, and, and become the scientists that, that they want to be in that that BioBus supports them to be. Um, this is uh, a little bit of external validation of our, of our model. Um, we actually tracked 4,500 students that boarded the BioBus, and we wanted to see what do they do after they're on the bus. In this case, 5% of those students, 4,500 students, 5% of them signed up for those in-depth programs, those longer-term programs at our community centers. 73% um, of those students that signed up had never done science outside of their classroom before. So not only are we seeing big shifts in attitude, we're actually seeing students change their behavior. Now again, this is not surprising, right? But people need to be out there doing this kind of work, giving students these kinds of opportunities. This number, I think, speaks to not only the amazing job that the BioBus team is doing, but it also speaks to the incredible need that's out there for these kinds of programs. Um, Students are hungry for these opportunities. Um, and, uh, and, and, and at the end of the day, those students come to, the, come to the programs, they show up, they attend, and they want to do more, right? They continue down this pathway that BioBus is helping create for them to, to, to really reach their full scientific potential. Um, this is a quote from one of the students. Um, uh, uh, you know, he, he's, he, he wants his science class to be more like what's on the bio bus and, and, and thinks he'd be more engaged and more excited and more thoughtful. Um, but what's really happening is that our students are becoming more engaged and more excited and more thoughtful. And the purpose of the bio bus is really to support the existing structures. We're not trying to replace science labs at schools. We're not trying to replace existing after-school programs. They're trying to enhance them trying to provide opportunities for those existing structures in the community to have the kind of advanced research microscopes that only scientists can really provide and maintain, um, and of course also bring in our scientists to, to, um, to really inspire those students to, to use those microscopes and to, to, to be curious and follow their, 
curiosity wherever it takes them. Um, so we've got this model. We've got, a, we've, we, we've, we've got a model for as many buses as you want us to build. We can build them. <laughs> we've got uh, amazing equipment uh, also sort of on the more hardware side. We've got microscopes on these incredible portable, self-powered, highly modular microscope stations. We can build as many of those as you want as well. Um, and I think most importantly, I, I know most importantly, um, we've got scientists. Um, scientists are inspired. Scientists are aware of the problem of science communication. Right? One of the things that PopTech taught me so well is the importance of engagement, civic engagement with, with scientists. And, and these are the scientists that have made the BioBus project work. Um, Tiffany, Sarah, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Sarah. Rob, Sasha, Latasha, Molly, Francesca, Eric, Tessa, Sam. These are the scientists that are really pioneers in this. And what we're trying to do is create a model so that those hundreds of thousands of scientists that marched in the March for Science in March and want to see science play a much more central role, like Clifford described, in society, right? These are the pioneers, and, and we're opening the doors, I think, for hundreds, thousands of other scientists to join us and really catalyze that movement to get scientists out into the communities and, and, and create the next generation of scientists. Um, so, do you want to see it bigger? Yes. How much bigger? <laughs> so these are Biobus's own growth projections, um, and uh, we want to see it bigger too. We know that the need is there. We know that we can do it. Um, we need support, um, and uh, I, you know, I really think that the only limiting factor right now are the resources at our disposal to build more of those microscopes, engage more students. Um, in, 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 in this growth curve, the most aggressive one, uh, we have 17 major programs that includes mobile labs and community labs uh, in five years from now, which means that we can reach 150,000 students every year just in the mobile lab programs. And you can imagine expanding that over five or 10 years, right? You're talking about millions of students that have a hands-on, positive, super exciting uh, experience with science. So I will end by saying that Biobus is not a classroom. Biobus is not a museum. Biobus isn't even always a bus. Um, Biobus is a research lab that comes to your school, that comes to your after-school program, to your summer camp, to your block party. Um, and creates pathways for students from kindergarten through college and beyond to achieve their full scientific potential. Thank you for your support.